We thank you for the fellowship that we've had with our families. Uh, oh, Father, it started Friday in some families. Uh, oh, Father, it started yesterday and it's still going on today. Lord, we just thank you that they're living. We thank you that we're able to hug them. We're able to kiss them. We're able to embrace them. We're able to have fellowship and conversation with them. Oh, Father, we thank you that you've given us another chance to get things right if things are not right with our families. Uh, oh, Father, your son came here to die. Your son was born this time of the season. He was born by Virgin Mary. He came to be the last sacrificial lamb. Uh, oh, Father, we thank you for sending your son. Uh, we thank you for sending him with a purpose. Uh, we thank you for allowing us to receive the gift uh, that he had to offer to us. Uh, and that was the gift salvation. Therefore, we give you glory. We give you honor and we magnify your name. Oh, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your patience, for your kindness, for your long suffering that you had towards us. That's why God, on this Christmas Eve day, we just give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Oh, Father, we magnify your name. We let it be known all over the world that we celebrate the birth of you, Jesus. Oh, God, we give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Lord, while we're praying here, we're asking you, Father, to touch the bodies of those that are having difficulties in their bodies. Oh, Father, continue to touch my mother. Lord, you sent, you blessed her to go through the surgery. But Lord, we're still praying that you will heal her. Heal her inside out. Uh -huh. Lord, heal her to where she can walk. Uh -huh. Lord, heal her to where that she can come back and testify uh, of what you've done for her while she was feeble. Uh -huh. Oh, Father, you are a miracle. Uh -huh. You got the miracle in your hand. You got the miracle in your finger. Uh -huh. We know that you are capable of doing it. We know that you are able to do it. Uh, we know you do it according to your will. And Lord, while we're waiting, we're just going to praise your name. We're going to praise you for what you're going to do. We're not going to worry about how you do it. We're just going to praise you because we know you're going to do it. We know that you're going to do it in your time and when you see fit and when you get ready. And while we're waiting, God, we're just going to give ourselves to you. Mind, body, and soul. Lord, not only my mother, but other family friends, other co-workers who are dealing with pain in their body. Some is dealing with cancer. Some is dealing with diabetes. Some is dealing with high blood pressure. Some is dealing with all other sorts of sicknesses. But Lord, we know that the power is in your hand. You told us to ask and it shall be given. You told us to seek and it shall be found. You told us to knock and the door shall be opened unto you. So Lord, that's why we're asking. We're asking for mercy. We're asking for grace. We're asking for healing hands. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, while we're waiting for you to do these things, Lord, we ask you to give us a heart of praise. Give us a heart of worship. Lord, we're going to praise you if you don't do it. Lord, we're going to praise you whenever you decide to do it. Because we know power is in your hands. The anointed is in your hands. Uh -huh. And Lord, if you don't move, nothing happens. Uh -huh. Lord, if you don't approve it, won't nothing take place. Uh -huh. Lord, we are aware that that's why we come here uh -huh. and give you all the glory uh -huh. and all the praise uh -huh. for your goodness, uh -huh. for your mercy, uh -huh. and for your kindness. Uh -huh. Soul say yes. Uh -huh. Lord, I'm asking you. Uh -huh. While you are touching uh, those bodies uh, that are dealing with pain, uh, Lord, I need for you to touch families uh, that lost loved ones uh, in the last few weeks, uh, in the last few months. Lord, uh, they desire to have their family members here. Uh, to some, it's going to be a bad year. Uh, it's going to be a bad Christmas. Uh, it's going to be a bad New Year's. Uh, because the ones they love is not here. Uh, so, Lord, you the one 
has got the power uh, to comfort the wounded hearts. Uh, those that are grieving, uh, those that's trying to understand. Uh, Lord, you told us in your word uh, that a man that is born of a man that is born of a woman uh, is of a few days and full of trouble. Uh, Lord, you showed us in the scripture that we didn't come here to stay. But we got to leave here. But you gave us some options. You gave us some choices. You told us to choose you this day. Who we will serve. And Lord, while we're waiting to be exited out of here, we come to the knowledge of your power and who you are. That's why we gave our life to you. That's why we came to you, God. That's why we wanted you to save us. Uh, sanctify us uh, and prepare us uh, to go back with him. Uh, that's the reason uh, we give you the praise. Uh, that's the reason uh, we give you worship. Uh, that's the reason uh, we give you every fiber of our beings. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, Lord, touch their hearts. Uh, Lord, touch their minds. Uh, Lord, we want to thank you that we haven't been a victim. Uh, to these enemies, uh, to these wicked spirits uh, that is going around terrorizing people uh, in road rage, uh, in breaking in houses, uh, in trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, but Lord, we know uh, that you come to give us life uh, and give it to us more abundantly. Uh, so Lord, we thank you for coming us under your blood. We thank you, Father, for protecting us. Uh, we thank you for giving us road mercy. Uh, we thank you for blessing our going out uh, and our coming in. Uh, we thank you for blessing our hands. Uh, Lord, we thank you for everything. Uh, now, Lord, as we uh, prepare to go in Christmas uh, and come out and look into the new year, uh, God, I need you. Uh, for me, God, uh, I need you to turn on the light. Uh, turn it on hot. Uh, turn it on bright uh, Open up my eyes to myself uh, Help me to see what I need to improve in uh, Help me what I need to see What I need to walk away from uh, God give me strength uh, God give me courage uh, Not just only me God uh, But in my family uh, In my children uh, With my wife uh, With my co-workers uh, Lord turn on the searchlight uh, Lord not just uh, us, uh, the family, Lord, but the church family, uh, the Monroe family, uh, the Wright family, uh, the Honoree family, uh, all the families uh, that are represented in this place. Uh, God, turn on the searchlight, turn it on bright, uh, turn it on hot, uh, that we may see ourselves, uh, humble ourselves, uh, come to you, God, uh, with a repenting heart, uh, with a repenting mind, uh, because we know uh, that according to your word, God, uh, no sin uh, will enter in the kingdom of God. Uh, so that's why, God, uh, we need you to purge us. Uh, we need you to purge us. Uh, purge us with his uh, that we may be clean, uh, wash us, uh, that we may be white as snow. Uh, Lord, we asking you to do it we asking you to do it. That's why we need you to have your way in 2024. Have your way, God, in the spirit realm. Let an anointing, got an opposite. Let an anointing fall fresh on the saints in the real holy temple, in the church of God in Christ, in all these other denominations. Let an anointing fall on our hearts. That it will straighten us up. Uh, that it will empower us. Uh, that it will purify us. Uh, that it will get us ready to go back with you, Lord. Uh, Lord, we here to receive. Uh, we here to receive uh, what you got to offer today. Uh, now, saints of God, uh, I need for you to stand on your feet. I need for you to clap your hands. Uh, I need for you to cry out for yourself. Uh, I need for you to pray for yourself. Uh, I don't pray for all of us. Uh, but I need for you to pray for yourself. 
I need for you to call God out uh, for yourself. Uh, you know your need. Uh, I can pray with you. Uh, I can pray for you. Uh, but here till uh, he hear your cry uh, out of your belly. Uh, tell him uh, what you need. Uh, we ain't talking about money. Uh, we ain't talking about houses and land. Uh, but we ain't talking about your spirit, God. Uh, we need your presence. Uh, in our life uh, we need your anointing uh, the birth out of our life uh, so that the world uh, the unsaved children uh, the unsaved men and women uh, the unsaved cousins and siblings uh, can see your glory uh, can see your glory uh, come on saints uh, clap your hands uh, come on saints uh, call on the name of Jesus uh, have your have your way, Lord. Have your way in this place. Lord, give us another touch. Give us another anointing that will carry us through this season. And we'll be back next week. And we'll be back week after that to continue to grow in your word and in your spirit. Lord, bless the musicians as they wait make their way here. Lord, bless this service. Lord, let your anointing fall heavy in this place. Lord, do it. Do it for your glory. Do it for your glory. And we will give you honor. We will give you glory. And we will magnify your name. Come on, saints, and clap your hands. Come on, saints, and give God glory. Lord, we want to bless your name. We bless your name. Lord, have your way right now in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, saints, and clap your hands. If you have a hymn book close to you, since today is Christmas Eve, let us sing, go tell it on the mountain. It's in your hymn book number 66. We ask that you sing it best way that you can. Don't worry about being in tune. Don't worry about being on note. Let us sing because we're singing unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Everybody sing. Go Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, a silent flock by night. Behold, throughout the heaven. The sun of holy light. Everybody ought to go and tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds fear and tremble when no one bowed the earth. Range out the angel chorus that held our Savior's birth. Everybody ought to go and tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger. The humble Christ was born, and God sent the salvation that blessed Christmas more. Everybody ought to go and tell it on the mountain, over the hill, everywhere. Go and go and tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled 
When low above the earth and raised out the angel chorus that held the Savior's birth, everybody ought to go. Verses 1 through 20. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinus was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Yes. Now there were in the same country shepherds, living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord showed around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then said the angel to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go to Bethlehem. And see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child, this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen and was told them. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody.
from the McCoy family, from all of us. We just wanted to give you guys a little bit of something. Um, it's not a whole lot, but it's just a thought, and we just wanted to just appreciate you. And I just want you to just get ready for the word of the Lord. Because there is an expectation, at least I know I have one. I have an expectation for the word of the Lord, and I believe you do too. And you're ready for the word to hear what God has to say to us today. Because there is a word for all of us. I just want you to get out your Bibles, your sword, get it out, open it up, and get ready to read the word that you may have something to live off of, eat off of for the rest of this week. You're welcome. Jesus' name we pray. Come on and let's give our offerings. The Lord 
is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. I said the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. Come on, help me, sir. He woke me up this morning. Thank you. 
But he, there was three things, categories, in this prayer that he committed to the Lord in pleading to be holy, godly, and walking blameless before him. He talked about his expression as he witnessed about God. He expressed his witness about God. In verse 1 he says, Will I sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing? He was talking about how that he was going to sing about God's mercy. He was going to sing about God's judgment. And then he pointed out when he made the phrase, oh, will I sing? His point was he would praise God in all things regardless of the circumstances that he would be in. Mm -hmm. Meaning that I'm going to praise God. I'm going to sing praises unto him. Even in my darkest hour, I'm going to praise him. Even in my darkest moments of life, I'm still going to acknowledge the power of who he is. The second thing here we come to discover, David expressed his walk with God. In verse 2, he says, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. He goes down to verse 3, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Uh, then he says in verse 4, A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. He said, Whoso privately slandered his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that had a high look and a proud heart, Will not I suffer? Uh, he said in verse 6, My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. In other words, David was expressing how he was going to walk before God. Verse 2, he says, I'm going to walk before God in his private life. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way, faultless way, uh, using a, a, a way, God's way of method, his method, referring to how that he's going to walk with integrity. He's going to walk with truthfulness, with being consistently pure and holy righteous. That holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, it means the righteousness of mind, body, and soul. Honest through and through, inwardly and outwardly, with a pure motive as well as in the word and deed. Then he says here, uh, his point was that he was requesting, he was begging, he was desiring for God's presence to be in his life, but he wanted his presence to be so heavy that in his private life, hear me good, in his private life, he says, I want to walk holy. Verse 3 requires, he says, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. He means now, in my public life, he says, I, I want to walk privately. Now I want to walk publicly, but I will, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. In his public behavior, he made a commitment to protect himself from evil things and wicked people. Desiring to live above blame, he determined to guard his eyes from anything that was wicked, anything that foul, anything that was immoral, anything that was corrupt and worthless. He said he would not look at anything that would tempt him to have to forbid Christ. In other words, he wasn't going to look at anything that would cause him to turn his back on God. He wasn't going to look at anything, anything that would turn him, uh, cause him to turn uh, against God in his behavior. Uh -huh. Y'all understand? Uh -huh. He says, I hate the work of them that turn aside. That turn aside phrase means fall away from the right path, turn away from God and his law. He says here, I, I hate it. Hating that. Now, he, he's saying as an expression, I despise anyone who fall away. In other words, you were with the Lord. You were walking with the Lord. You claimed that you were with the Lord. Now you done turned and went in a different direction. Now you are considered as a backslider. Now you are drifting away from God into sin. He said, and I want to make sure that it does not cleave to me. He said, I refuse to allow them or their sinful ways to cling a grip a hold to me. And then when you look at verse 4 and 5, David vows to disown godless, that word forward, perverse, headstrong, willful, stubborn-hearted person shall depart from me. I would not know a wicked person. 
David promised to reject those who had a perverse, headstrong, willful, stubborn heart towards God. People who are corrupt and crooked. He said, I have determined to stay away from all evil, declaring that they would not know or become personally, watch this, become personally involved with me. In other words, he said, I'm not going to let that mess that they practice be something that I'm personally involved in. I'm not going to be involved in wickedness. He says in verse 5, who's privately slandered his neighbor, him will I cut off, that had a high look and a proud heart, would not I suffer. David made a commitment to cut off or silence those who secretly slander others. Y'all see that? Secretly slander others. He would not tolerate prideful, arrogant, self-important people who require to further themselves at the expense of other people. Who require to further themselves at the expense of the people that they are connected to. For that reason, he vowed to reject them and their positions as his administrator in his home and in his kingdom. David made another vow in verse 6 and 7. He says uh, he vowed uh, to fellowship with the godly. In verses 4 and 5, he made a vow to disown the godless. Now he makes a vow to fellowship with the godly. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. David was saying he would be seeking the right companions for fellowship. In other words, he says, I'm not just going to seek to be around anybody. i got to seek around the right people to fellowship with. Understand, saints, if we're going to walk blameless before God, uh, one thing we have to be careful is who we walk with. we got to be careful in who we fellowship with. Uh, the Bible even teaches us that we should not fellowship with known fornicators. I know I'm right. I might not know exactly what the place is at, but he says we should not even fellowship with those that walk in darkness. That means uh, I'm not going to fellowship with a habitual liar. I'm not going to eat at the table with it. Because if I say one thing by mistake, he can twist it, make it a lie, and it'll run out like a virus in the street. we got to be careful. Because uh, if we're not, we can even say things from an honest heart about how we feel about each other, our brother or sister in the church. But if you sit at the table with a troublemaker, if you sit at the table with somebody that believes in sowing seeds of discord, uh, oh my, they will take what you said and use it as a weapon against you. And now you got to sit here and deal with the backlash and no one has any solid facts. I'm reminded of what Brother Owens, who's a member of the church here, he used to say, well, he said the truth don't need no help. Right. He said sometimes we got to let that virus of a lie run just like a virus. Yeah. A virus runs its course and after a while it checks up. Yeah. Uh huh. Sometimes we got to allow that lie just to run and eventually the truth will show up. But David says here that he seek the right companionship and fellowship and counsel in his service. After describing the kinds of people he would reject, David identified the types of individuals he would select and assist him in governing God's people and his house. He said he would seek for faithful men who are trustworthy, who are dependable, who is consistent, who is stable, who is loyal and dedicated or proven to be worthy of trusting. David's point was, I'm going to surround myself with the right kind of people, people whose ways is perfect in the will of God, capable men uh, who will advise, who will advise, give advice in the interest of God, men of integrity. He said, I'm going to surround myself around people who have integrity. Then in verse 7, he says, he that worketh the seat shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. David's point was he would reject anyone who was deceitful, who would lie. He would not allow them to dwell in his house, nor would he let them have anything to do in his house. He don't want them in his presence. 
Ain't it amazing how that we still entertain people who are still deceitful, who still lie, who still cause problems in the inner circle? David was speaking of his inner circle at this moment. He says his associates, his close advisors, who would work directly with him, he was determined not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand it in the way of sinners. He said that in Psalms 1, if any of his officers or uh, if any of his officials ever deceived or lied to him or anyone spoke falsely about others, he would permanently remove them from their position. In other words, he was saying, in my house, in my kingdom, uh, he says, I'm going to do this. And let me tell you something. Uh, we as believers, we as preachers, uh, we got to protect God's house the same way David is protecting his house. We can't have a known liar to be a part of the ministry by working in it. Sit in the pew and wait for your deliverance. We can't have a known homosexual on the music, on the choir, in the children's section. Sit on the pew till you get your deliverance. But because you are not delivered and got all these gifts and talents, I'm not going to give you no position. I'm not going to write off for your credentials uh, because you haven't walked in a way that God is pleased with. And see, when you walk in blameless before God, uh, that's why you can see that scripture that says, your gift will make room for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we be quoting things, uh, not understanding that the gift got to go a little further than just having the talent. Your heart has got to be right. You got to use that gift to glorify God, uh, not to edify yourself. Last thing here, David says, and then we're going to go home. Says in verse 8, said, I will early destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. In other words, you heard the phrase, uh, the city of David. Uh, you heard of how that the city of David was ruled by David, but, but David's ruler was God himself. What David was saying was, uh, I, I'm gonna close. I'm gonna close the doors. I'm gonna remove. I'm gonna destroy, destroy all of those things uh, that are not justice. That are not, uh, 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 other words, they don't show no justice. Uh, they don't show no righteousness. Uh, he says, among God's people, I'm committing myself uh, to uphold the righteousness of God uh, and the justice of God by doing two things. He made a promise to the Lord and it ended this prayer by saying, Lord, I promise that I will silence the wicked. David says, I promise you, Lord, that I will be fearless and just in all my vindications. That I'm going to silence the wicked and I'm going to cut them off from the opportunity of doing evil. He said, I'm going to remove all lawless evildoers from society. I'm going to remove these evildoers from society and expel them out of the city. In other words, he said, I'm going to move them out. I'm going to make sure that they do not cause harm to the sheep that you allow me to show. Elder Doe, when I saw that, I said, shame on the pastors uh, that have allowed evildoers to tear up their church. Knowing that this person is not qualified uh, from the spiritual aspect to hold positions in the church. Uh, and this person here is tearing up the house. Yeah. He's tearing up the house and he's sowing seeds of discord. And he's sowing poisonous thoughts and ideals uh, in the innocent sheep. David said, when I find out who you are, I'm moving you out. Not only am I taking the position from you, I'm showing you the front door. Because you can't, I'm not going to let that poison come into my house uh, that God have assigned me to oversee uh, just so that I can have people in positions. Uh, let me tell you something, YouTube and Facebook and you that are here for the Holy Temple. I'm the wrong man if you think you're going to come in uh, and disturb and mess up what God has assigned me to oversee. I'm not going to have no drama here. I'm not going to have no arguing and fighting and all this stupid, sinful stuff that's going on among the believers. I'm not going to have that. I can have church by myself. I can clap my hands. I can sing in a note. I know how to pray a tambourine. I can praise God if I ain't got no music, if I ain't got no vocals, if I ain't got nothing. Because he needs somebody that's got clean hands and a pure heart. You want that nothing to show up in the building? The vessel has got to be a vessel of honor. Can't be a vessel of dishonor. 
It can't be a vessel that has contaminated everything. Oh man, when I looked at this, when I looked at this, I said, Lord, show me from a uh, uh, application firm how application point. How is the saints need to think? Show me here that in order for us to be able to walk blameless before God, we acknowledge the fact that He's been good to us. We acknowledge the fact that God sent His Son here around this time of the year. He sent Him through the womb of a lady by the name of Mary. He came here as a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. Uh, I know some wonder why I didn't have a Christmas sermon. I have one. Every time I preach is a Christmas sermon. And he came here. He came in a baby. He came here. Oh, Sister Wright, he came. He came. He came and the world was looking for a, a, a king. Uh, but the king they were looking for it was the wrong man oh this little man came here he had more power in his hand as a baby and just as much power as a grown man he came here saints he came here and he walked among the earth oh he was nurtured like a human baby he came here and he came for one purpose he came to save the souls of the human race oh he came own and history said and his home rejected him. Oh my and when his own rejected him others outside of his family, his Jewish family the Gentiles which is us uh, we received what he had to offer oh when I looked at this brothers and sisters when I looked at this I said Lord uh, what is the application of this uh, he says him just as David was wanting to commit living a blameless life uh, Life of integrity and above reproach. He says, we got to have the same desire. We got to have a desire, Sister Robin, to live a blameless life. We got to have a desire to live with integrity. That means to live honestly. We got to be able to want to have a desire that our life will shine out of the world. In other words, when they look at me, they see the glory of God in me. When they look at me, they're not looking at a demon. When they look at me, they're not looking at an imp. But they're looking at a man that's been changed from the inside out. Jesus said, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, so I read, when they look at me, I want them to see the glory of God. I want them to see a man that desires to walk blameless before God. I might not walk blameless before you. It depends on how you are judging me. I'm not going to worry about your judgment. The only judgment I worry about is the one that has cleaned me. When I look here at this, I got to be like David. I got to strive to live blameless. I got to strive to live honest and holy. Not only do I got to strive to do this in the public, but I got to do this in my private life. You really want to know what kind of relationship a man have with Jesus. It's going to tell how much he spent time with the Lord in his private life. That's the reason why I ain't got time to look at stupid television shows. I ain't got time to look at a whole lot of lying politicians. But every time I got time to spend by myself, I ain't worried about what's happening in society. Because the world is going to hell in a handbasket. Because the Bible says hell has enlarged itself. And some theologians say it had moved up to meet the people. I am aware that this is happening in society. So I'm not going to be caught up in what's going on on the outside. I got to worry about what's going on on the inside. Because this is not my home. I'm just passing through. But I'm going to a place. I'm going to live in a city that the city buildings are not made by the hands of me. But they're made by God. They're made by his angels. Souls 
say yes. Uh, but before I can get there, uh, there's a certain way I got to walk. Uh, I got to walk righteous before God. Uh, I got to walk holy before God. I got to walk holy in his eyes. Uh, every time he sees me, uh, he got to see me living holy. Uh, every time uh, he hear me talk, uh, I ain't worried about what you hear, uh, but I'm worried about him that hears me. Uh, he's a God that don't sleep. Uh, he's a God that's up all the time. Uh, he's sovereign saints. Uh, he was here in the beginning. He's here presently right now. Uh, and he's going to be here uh, at the end. Uh, so say yes. Uh, I want to go see him. And I got to walk right before him. Uh, as we get ready, saints, uh, to go in the year 2024. Uh, this is your Christmas present from me. Uh, Get a right church uh, and let's go home. Uh, we see all the failure uh, that is among the body of Christ. Uh, we see their attitude. Uh, we see their pride. Uh, we see the lust. Uh, we see the envy. Uh, we see the moodiness uh, that they are walking in. Uh, and I come to tell you, saints, uh, that is not the way of the cross. Uh, that is not the way of God. Uh, when God uh, saves a man, he cleans him up. Uh, from the inside out, uh -huh. y'all can get tired of hearing me uh -huh. talk that we in 2024. Uh -huh. He said, "Blessed are the pure in heart, uh -huh. for they shall see God." Uh -huh. And if your heart is not pure, uh -huh. if your heart is wicked, uh -huh. if your heart is envy, if your heart is messed up. Uh -huh. Hell is going to be your home. Uh -huh. Well, but I don't believe that. Uh -huh. I don't believe God. Uh -huh. To take a good man like me. I ain't done no harm to nobody. Uh -huh. I haven't killed anybody. Uh -huh. I haven't stolen from anybody. Uh -huh. I haven't lied or cheated. Uh -huh. Why would he send me to hell? Uh -huh. Well, I wish I had. Uh -huh. Somebody to give me a report uh -huh. about how God is dealing uh -huh. Bishop Carlton Pearson because when he left him he thought and he changed his doctrine and said that there was no eternal hell. Well I can't worry about him but because the Bible tells me if you live right heaven will belong to you but if you live like hell hell will be your home Eternity means no end. That means we got to get it right here. We can't get it right on the other side. Because this is the dressing room. You either dressing for hell or you dressing for heaven. And they tell me I got to pull off the old man. I got to put on the new man. Oh, y'all know what I mean. I got to pull off the old man. Put on a new man. Uh, what is that old man? Uh, I got to pull off lying. Uh, I got to pull off cheating. Uh, I got to pull off adultery. Pull off fornication. Uh, then I got to go in the inside. Uh, after I strip the outside. Uh, I got to get God uh, to clean up the inside. Uh, lust. Uh, jealousy. Uh, in me. And strife that's got to be out of me. And then when I have pulled off the old man and pulled off the old man and got the inside man cleaned up, then I can put on a new man. So say yes, I'm getting ready to go. But when I put on a new man, I put on love. I put on joy, I put on peace, I put on long suffering. Every day is a blessing just to say thank you for changing my life. And when I put on that garment, I'm walking blameless before God. Thank <laughs> you.
your father. In the name of the Lord, I dare you to say, God, I need a stronger desire. I need a stronger desire. Come on, saints. I need a stronger desire. God, we need a stronger desire. We need a strong faith. We need a strong faith to follow you. To have a fellowship. Have a relationship. The closer we get to you, God, the more we don't have a desire to stay in sin, to practice sin, to do sin. Come on, saints. Don't let me pull too hard. But if you wanted to move, if you wanted to move, if you wanted to move, come on and tell God. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, we're going to go home. But I got to pray for some people. Come on, we're going to go home. Yes, God. Habiba. Come here, sweetie. Come on, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. I'm not trying to work y'all. I just need for y'all to keep it up. Every time the devil can find a way to slide in quietness, he's going to do it. This is war time. Let's go. Sister Robin, come on.